In this screencast, we're going to look at phase changes that can take place for water. And we're going to use a pressure temperature diagram. This is log of pressure versus temperature. And we'll use a simulation to show the behavior. And so what the simulation is going to show is the relative amounts. For example, if we had one kilogram, how much is ice, how much is liquid water, and how much is vapor at any given location. And remember, this is the critical point. That's the end of the dividing line between liquid and vapor. This is the dividing line, the phase envelope between solid and liquid. And this actually, though you can't tell, has a slightly negative slope. And then here is the triple point. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a few different phase transitions and the type behavior that we see if we carry a process out at constant pressure or at constant temperature. Now keep in mind this pressure temperature diagram is a, a projection of a 3D surface and so volume if you like is perpendicular to the surface and so we won't be able to see the volume changes, but they can, can be a pretty important part of this. So let's look at the simulation and some of the behavior. So let's, for example, look at a isothermal process and we'll look at sublimation. And so as the volume changes, you'll notice the volume is changing very slowly here. We're lowering the pressure and we get to here. Now sublimation takes place, namely solids converting into vapor. In order for this to happen, we're going to have to put energy into the system. We're going to have to, for example, add heat. We're going to carry this isothermally. We have to provide the energy for the heat of vaporization. So now the volume is changing significantly as the solid sublimes. Now the volume changes isothermally as we, as we lower the pressure. So isothermal expansion of a gas does work. We would have to be taking energy out to expand it isothermally. And, and the gas expanding would be doing work. Well that's one isothermal process. <clears throat> Similar type behavior happens for liquid going to vapor if on the temperature that's above the triple point. So let's look on the phase diagram for a melting process. And we're carrying, carrying this out isothermally. So we're going to start with solid. And you notice on the expanded diagram, the insert here, and pressure versus temperature actually below this line it looks like we're right on the solid liquid line but we're below it when we have this expand the scale it's such a steep line but the important point is that the line has a negative slope meaning that as I raise the pressure by decreasing the volume as I raise the pressure I'm going to approach the line and we have to look at the insert so now we've hit the line, raise the pressure a little more by decreasing the volume, and we get some liquid forming. So this is being done isothermally. We have to be putting energy in to convert the solid to liquid. And if you notice the scale on this specific volume, we're making very small changes in the volume. But I'm decreasing the volume to the point where I have all liquid and now I'm off the line and in the liquid phase and again we raise the pressure without much change in volume and this of course doesn't require much energy. So let's look at some isobaric processes and the first one let's look at the triple points. So I pick the pressure that corresponds to the triple pressure. I'm going to select the Gibbs phase rule so we can see the phase rule where here F is the number of degrees of freedom, C is the number of components, which in our case is 1, and then in the solid phase, P 
is the number of phases, so that's one. So it says when we're in the solid phase, we have two degrees of freedom, namely pressure and temperature. Well, we're going to keep pressure constant for this example, and I'm going to add energy, heat up the system. At constant pressure, as I, as I heat it up, of course, solid temperature increases until, in this case, I get to the triple point. And now I'm starting to form some liquid, and I keep adding energy, and we have three phases present. So remember, this is the only location of the diagram where we can have three phases. And you can see from the phase rule, we have no degrees of freedom. We can't pick the, uh, the pressure. And then the actual way the solid converts to liquid and vapor, th this is just an approximation. We don't, we don't really know how to predict this. But the point is that as we keep putting in energy, we're going to eventually end up with just vapor. And once we, once we have all vapor, by continuing to add energy, heating it up, so here we have all vapor. Now we've left a triple, we've left a triple point. We have energy, we're just going to heat up the, the vapor phase. Well, let's look at another isobaric process, sublimation. The idea here is if we're at a pressure below the triple point pressure, and I add heat, then I'm going to hit the phase envelope. Now there's one degree of freedom. I can be at different pressures corresponding to different temperatures, but I can only adjust either pressure or temperature. Once I fix one to be on that envelope, the other is fixed. So I add heat to the solid. It converts it to vapor because we're below the triple point and I add enough heat. So now I leave that line and I start increasing the temperature. Equivalent behavior of melting, so I start with the solid, again adding heat, but now because we're above the triple point pressure, when I hit the line now I form liquid, and I stay on that line of course until all the solid forms liquid, and now raising the temperature, I'm heating up the liquid. So the important point here is that we understand how the phase rule applies, and we understand the behavior that adding heat does not necessarily change the temperature. When we hit one of these phase dividing lines that separate liquid from vapor, or solid from liquid, or solid from vapor.